Today, we're going to be talking about the good and the bad of She-Hulk. You see, I wanted to do a proper deep dive into my feelings about She-Hulk for quite a while now. But I think this is a show that's become quite hard to talk about. Because I promise this video will get criticised on both sides. Well, you're just a raging sexist, aren't you? Why are you supporting this show with its feminist agenda? So therefore, I thought this video was the best way to present my thoughts. The good and the bad of She-Hulk. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first good point, the performances. Overall, I think it's been very strong across the board. Say what you like about the CGI, Tatiana Mislani is fantastic as She-Hulk. She's just got such a great presence about her and I love the way she's taken on the character. She's great when she has to do fourth wall breaks and she's just really funny, but also makes you care about her. Because no, I don't find this to be some feminist spewing piece of trash. I've also got fantastic performances across the board. All of your MCU favourites coming in, like Mark Ruffalo, uh, Tim Roth, a bloke who plays Abomination, and obviously in the most recent Charlie Cox episode, all of these guys are doing fantastic work. I'm not going to list off all of the characters' names, but all of our new guys also do fantastic work. Specific shout out to Renee Elise Goldberry. Angelica, Eliza, and Peggy, the Skylar sisters. All of these guys give great performances, and overall, it's definitely a highlight of the show. Okay, so my first problem with She-Hulk, it doesn't take the lawyer element seriously enough. Now, this might just be a me problem, but I really enjoy those types of serious lawyer dramas. And I definitely wasn't expecting the MCU to go full serious broad church or one of the American ones. I, I, I couldn't give you an example. But I think we have examples in multiple episodes where everything that happens in a courtroom is just kind of taken as a joke. And I think that takes all of the interest out of any of the specific courty legal elements. Because there's never any stakes to any of these legal battles. It never really feels very funny in the courtroom. Quotes came out when She-Hulk first started airing that the She-Hulk writers never really studied law or looked at it properly in any specific way. I feel like the way to make the show a little bit more of a success was to treat the most serious bits as in the courtroom. Because then we really could have had some interesting things happen and had some real personal stakes. However, everything set in a court does just feel like a joke and that just kind of makes for an unenjoyable time. My second good point, She-Hulk has delivered some of my singular favourite MCU Disney Plus episodes. As a whole, no, I'd say She-Hulk hasn't been one of my favourites. But it has given us some of my favourite singular Disney Plus episodes. For example, the first episode. As you said before, She-Hulk is a great character, and seeing her interact with Mark Ruffalo's Hulk, who we've known for a while, and just having a lot of fun, but with some serious issues being brought up, I found it incredibly enjoyable. You also have the most recent episode with Charlie Cox's Daredevil, where things are really working incredibly well. Those two characters work well together, and this is the one episode where the legal elements are taken slightly more seriously, which was obviously my big first problem. So while not all episodes have been highlights, these two have definitely been some of the best Disney Plus has managed to offer. Leading on from that point though, that does prove it leans on its side characters quite a lot. The show has this big problem where it, the middle run of its episodes, especially you know, its most recent run, just hasn't been working. And that's probably because of its lack of side characters. In terms of characters we already knew before the MCU. For example, episodes 2, 3, and 4 are carried by Emil Blonsky and Wong. I feel like if you took those characters out, the show wouldn't be as interesting. And then going on from that, you've got episodes like 5 and 6, and even 7, which still struggles a bit, where it just takes this big lull because of a lack of side presence. Overall, this problem is just a big mix of relying on its side characters too much, and not really knowing what to do when it doesn't have those MCU assists around. My final point, I do have a lot of things I like about the show's style. Yes, I have criticised, you know, like the legal side not being taken as seriously. But apart from that, the show is consistently funny. And with the style of character this is from the comics, I think that is very important that overall it did take this tone. Even though I still wish it had taken the legal elements a little bit more seriously. 
but it does sometimes feel in the best way, a show where you can kind of just switch your brain off and have quite a fun time. I found it to be quite a mid episode, but episode 7 with a lot of the cool therapy stuff, it was just a lot of fun. Also talking about style, I think it works really well to go back to a 9 episode series. I think a lot of us had gotten very bored of what were being described as six episode movies and I feel like embracing that classic TV formula a little bit more works in She-Hulk's favour. It feels like whenever we do a She-Hulk episode there's a lot less stuffing, there's a lot less, you know, filler and I quite like that. It just feel well packaged and work well within a fun 25 minutes. My third problem is its storytelling is a bit weird. I think this boils down to the show has struggled by not choosing whether to be an episodic show or like one story within the entire series. Because it's kind of been like lots of stories feel self-contained and yet sometimes, you know, there'll be lingering plot threads and things like that. Which can work when it's a bit better executed. You have certain things that, you know, have been like milling along the background, like a big She-Hulk hate campaign, that haven't really been working because they haven't really been given enough depth for me to really care about. And then you have this influencer storyline that went on for a few episodes, you know, started on the first episode, came back for a bit, and that character just didn't work for me. It's kind of led to this show feeling quite unfocused, where a lot of its little threads don't really work, but yeah, it hasn't really committed to telling this big epic story that can have this cool payoff. So yeah, I personally think that could have done with a little bit more fine-tuning. So yeah, those are my overall thoughts. Quite a few problems, some really fantastic elements, and overall a character that I'm excited to see where she goes in the MCU. Now this is the most important bit of this video. I made an absolutely class MCU ranking all in 8 minutes. You'll get through them all so quickly. I reckon you should watch it, because it's actually class.